And in celebrating our birthday, we invite our friends, our family, our colleagues from across the globe to join us, celebrate it, and to mark it in grand style. And in doing so, we have decided to do a number of things, including showing films to tell the African story using NYU lens and vice versa. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to be able to start off the right way, I'm going to invite to the microphone the Odikro of this place, the landlord of this place. Landlord in a, in a sense, and let me introduce him to you before he comes to the microphone. He grew up in Lagos, Nigeria, and learned to read from the newspapers before he, even attending school. He's the author of the groundbreaking memoir Lives of Great Men Living and Loving as an African Gay Man, which won the, the Lambda Literary Award 2018 for biography or memoir. His share prince was a Gerald Crack finalist and part of its As You Like It anthology, which also garnered a Lummy in 2019. His last night and Asaba, along with other incredible stories from around Africa, have been anthologized in the heart of the matter. He also contributed the short story, Crife, to the Relations Anthology 2023. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our special landlord, Professor Edozin, Frankie Chike, now welcomes all of us. I need my rent money. Thank you, Dr. Tim. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the start of our wonderful anniversary celebration and symposium. So, um, yeah, 20 years. NYU, as an institution, um, was formed in 1831. So that's a lot of anniversaries. But one of the things that has always been in the NYU DNA has been that it is a private university, a very private university, but always in the public service. 20 years ago, we began in Accra as a global site in the public service. And we take our friends and our neighbors very, very, very seriously. Our first NYU Accra, some of you are familiar with the very splendid restaurant down the road called Vine. <laughs> and that was the very, very first uh, spot that NYU Accra welcomed people. In the 20 years, we've had all kinds of wonderful professors come and join us in educating our students, and I'm so glad that some of our pioneer professors are here. And it reminded me of the first time I went to Elmina Castle in 2008, um, when I was bringing a small summer class here. In one of the, the walls in those hallowed grounds, there was something that I saw that was etched in the wall, and it stuck with me ever since then. And it was just a phrase that I think has been banded around the continent, but it was really quite apt to what we as a university were trying to do. And those words were, until the lion has his historian, the hunter will always be the hero. And so I think about that in terms of in dealing with our own story as Africans, who is recording our history? Whose perspective is important? I come from the journalism world where we are often told we need to check our biases at the door. So for us who are scholars and learners here in Ghana, we've got some basic questions. Whose story is it? Yours, mine, ours, or theirs? Who's telling that story? How are they telling that story? Who's watching? Who's listening? Whose narrative is nuanced? And where does the truth lie in this incredible challenging world that we live in? Our community here at NYU Accra is one where we know we are here to learn as well as to teach. We know the Global South has so much to offer the world. And we are very, very proud to be part of that Global South that has so much to offer, as well as having so much to learn. And we approach all of our dealings from this point. We are about teaching, and we are also about learning. 
the films that have been selected that you will see over the next two days have much to teach us. Please enjoy them. They have been ably curated by me. <laughs> so if you have a problem with any of them, see me later. <laughs> but they do have a lot to tell us. And if you are provoked by any of these films, let's have a conversation about it. If it makes you feel something, let's have a conversation about it. All of the films here that will be shown this weekend are films that have a lot of meaning for us here at NYU Accra. Either because they are teaching tools for us, or that we have enjoyed them, or they have been produced, or our family has contributed to it in one way or the other. So please enjoy all of these films, and I thank you for coming. And we have two days of films, so please tell all your friends to join us. Uncle Tim, the mic is yours. I need my rent. <laughs> I surely will pay the rent. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, from New York, to make some welcome remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Winelia Guterres, who is Associate Vice President of the Global Office of the Office of the Global Inclusion, OGI. She has 22 years of relations with NYU, including her most recent role as Chief of Staff in University Relations and Public Affairs. Winelia has demonstrated exceptional leadership in higher education and organizational management, making her an ideal fit for OGI during the critical phase of its five-year development history. Join me, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming Vinelia. Thank you very much, Tim. I will admit that I have not updated my bio online. So uh, I've been at MOU now for almost 25 years. Uh, in January will be uh, my anniversary. And I currently serve as Associate Vice President for Strategy and Operations in our Office of Global Inclusion. I'm delighted to join you all here today to celebrate the diversity of voices and perspectives represented across today's cinematic showcase. I would like to thank, and I'm sure my colleagues will echo these when they join in their remarks, uh, Frankie Adosian for everything Frankie does for NYU, for our students, for our site. I'd like to thank our local staff, of whom I've had only the pleasure of meeting for a little bit but it's been clear to me that the work that our colleagues do here is way more than a job. I think the dedication that I have seen is exceptional and I'm proud to be part of the team. <laughs> thank you to our faculty, current and past, thank you very much, to our students and our partners, both domestic and abroad. Together, we are stronger. Across and intellectually, and culturally vibrant city, and the Office of Global Inclusion is proud to be a supporter of this robust learning community that has been founded two decades ago. Happy birthday, NYU Accra. We're grateful to all, you have, to all who have helped us get this far and look forward to many more fruitful collaborations. And now I won't keep you longer. Um, I will pass it back over to Tim so that we can move forward with enjoying our day. Thank you very much for having me and enjoy yourselves. If you've been wondering what brevity means, that's brevity in, in reality. Next to speak to us and to welcome us is William Pruitt, who is Associate Vice President of Global Programs. William is a, is a constant face here in Accra. He works with university leadership and faculty in Abu Dhabi, New York, and Shanghai to enhance academic and student services at steady away sites. He leads efforts in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and previously held roles at Shanghai Finance University, Virginia Tech, and the University of South Carolina. William holds a PhD in higher education administration from Virginia Tech, focusing on study abroad propensity among college students. With the greatest pleasure, I introduce to you William Pruitt. Good to see you again. All right, all right, how we doing? Yes. Okay, okay, I am William Pruitt, the Associate Vice President of Global Programs in New York. 
And I always say it is my honor to be in Ghana. I used to want to do music, so I made a rhyme there. But though it's an honor to be in Ghana, it's always a privilege to work for the amazing people here at NYU Accra. Um, so with that being said, can we just give a round of applause to the staff who have worked so diligently to put this event together? And I personally would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to the visionary and director of NYU Accra, Professor Chike Adozi, and thank you for all that you do here. So there is a course at NYU Accra that is very popular. It's called Documenting the African Cities. The vision has been expanded now to include documenting the African countries, cities, and regions. And today as we come to celebrate these talented artists in the film industry, NYU, we vow to continue doing our part to provide a platform where these amazing works can not only be promoted, but can be celebrated and appreciated. So we are very thankful to have the opportunity because we know that the voices from Africa have always been strong. And we're thankful that we have the opportunity here to continue turning up the volume. We use our platform and our curriculum our pedagogy, our community outreach, any way that we can to make sure that we're telling the stories and the right narrative is being told properly. All that being said, I hope you enjoy this amazing event. I will be brief also. I hope you understand the five B's that I live by, which are be brief, brother, be brief. So I will not stay here long, but I will leave you with the words that I have heard over and over and over again since I arrived here in Ghana. Akwaba. Thanks. William reminds me of my literature class, The Free Flow of Bees. Alliteration, all of that. <laughs> Thank you, William, and welcome again to Accra, Akwaba. Next to speak to us and to welcome all of us from across the globe is Eric Dietrich, who is the Vice Provost of Undergraduate Education at NYU Abu Dhabi, focusing on equity and internationalization in higher education. He has published on affirmative action in Brazil and co-leads research on access for black students. Dietrich directs the SAGE research project and is involved with the Magna Carta Universitatum Observatory. He received the NYU Steinhardt Teaching Excellence Award and a Fulbright International Education Award. He holds a PhD from NYU, a master's from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and a BA from Carlton College. So I introduce to you now a true NYU material. Welcome, Eric. Good morning, everyone. It is wonderful to see you here today. My name is Eric Dietrich. As I was introduced, and uh, I'm a professor of international education and higher education at the Steinhardt School in New York, and now also Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education at NYU Abu Dhabi, which is a wonderful opportunity for me to live outside the United States again and see the world from, well, we could say better perspectives. This is my fifth visit to Ghana. And I first came in the year 2000s, before we had an NYU center here in Accra. And I came with a group of NYU students who were in the Martin Luther King Scholars Program in a way to sort of test the waters, to see could this be a place where we could really have a wonderful NYU Global Academic Center where our students could learn, thrive, and engage with the world. And of course, the answer from the students that I brought, we went home to New York with a resounding yes, absolutely. So I came in 2000. I came in 2008, 2013, 2019, and now 2024. And each time, of course, I see changes in the country, but I also see this incredible continuity of commitment of this center to engaging people from outside of Accra with the leadership and the vision 
of what's happening in this country. On that first trip that I brought the students, the 47 students in 2000, we had an amazing trip. We visited some profound sites here, including, as Frankie mentioned, the slave castles in Elmina and Cape Coast, where enslaved Africans were sent to the Americas, and where over time and through incessant struggle, they created an incredible, powerful, global diaspora. We also visited the final home and eternal resting place of W.E.B. Du Bois. And Du Bois is one of my intellectual heroes. In 1903, a bit over 100 years ago, 120 years ago, he said, that the problem of the 20th century was the problem of the color line. And now, 120 years later, many economists, scholars, and leaders have shown that he was right. And also now, 120 years later, scholars, researchers, leaders are saying, and I think they're right, that the 21st century will be the African century. This continent has the youngest average demographic age of any continent in the world, and the ideas and the power that is surging up through young people is going to reshape the way that we engage with the 21st century. I was in Ethiopia in January and June I was invited there as a Fulbright specialist to help their Ministry of Education and their top universities to become more international, to engage more with the rest of the world. And I see that across Africa, there are great investments being made by China, great investments being made by the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, where I'm now living. And I see that Africa is poised to make and play a transformative role in the world. And so I believe that this continent, which is the final resting place of W.E.B. Du Bois, will actually define this century that we have coming up. My partner, Pierre, is here with me. Pierre, could you wave? Pierre-Louis, he's a fashion photographer born in Haiti living in New York now. And I, of course, brought him here in part because I could never be forgiven if I didn't. <laughs> and also because it's part of NYU Accra's mission to introduce people from around the world to this country, to introduce them to Accra, to introduce them to Ghana through education and interaction with leaders to start to understand the role of Ghana in the role and the role of themselves in the world and to connect scholars, researchers, artists, change makers to this place where so much that is inspiring and complex and rich with talent is happening. Under the past leadership of Akosua Anidoho, who was a wonderful director for us for so many years, and now under the talented leadership of Frankie Adosian and all of the great staff of NYU Accra, this place has become a vibrant nexus for talent, for creativity, for research, for education, not only for Ghana or for West Africa, but really for the world. When I first came to Accra, the internet was just in its infancy. AOL was still on dial-up. It was so painful. Facebook and its social media cousins had not even been thought of. And now, we're at this moment of seeing that higher education and really the world is being redefined by artificial intelligence, AI, chat GPT, and so forth. And I think right now the question that's in front of us, more pointedly than ever, 
is what does it mean to be human? And what does it mean to be humane in this time? And what does it mean to generate human knowledge and human creativity in this place? And to engage with each other as co-creators of knowledge, as co-creators of the world that we want to have going forward. And I continue to believe that the answer lies with the global liberal arts. That's what NYU is doing, that's what NYU Abu Dhabi is doing, that's what NYU Accra is doing. We are engaging students in a global liberal arts education that is helping them to see that what they're doing in the world matters, that we must come at it from many, many points of view and disciplines. And I believe that through that vision, we can continue to engage with the world this century and beyond. So NYU Accra, happy birthday. You've been here 20 years. I think, inshallah, there will be 20, 120 more years of NYU Accra. And it will be a place where we continue to do the good, the thoughtful, the creative, the complex, and the difficult work that our world needs. Thank you so much. I must admit that I haven't really articulated the reason for our 20th anniversary celebrations as you did. And I'm going to confer on you, confer on you a, a title from, for two reasons. That your long association with NYU Accra, and number two, that you well articulated why we should be celebrating 20 years of NYU Accra. So from today, by the powers conferred on me by me, I confer on you the title Nikote the First. So with those remarks from um, Eric, I think we can now begin our very first, why we are here. We'll be watching a film, which is roughly about an hour, and then I expect that we will watch it carefully, uh, reflectively, so that when it is time for us to have a session, the right questions can be asked. <laughs> 